Greetings to everyone. I'm Rahul from Indian Institute of Science situated in Bangalore in India. I work in Photonics Research Lab in the Department of Center for Nanoscience and Engineering. And I'm going to present my work on high efficiency broadband grid coupler in silicon nitride amorphous silicon, silicon nitride sandwiched hybrid waveguide. Photonic integrated circuits are versatile and they are used for various applications like high bandwidth communication, sensing of various analytes, and recently in quantum photonics. Photonic ICs comprises of light sources, both external and integrated, waveguides to connect various components in the circuit, light couplers to couple light from external source into the waveguide, wavelength selective devices for multiplexing and demultiplexing, modulator to modulate the carrier, and finally, the photodetector for optical to electronic conversion. In this work, our focus is on waveguides and light coupler. And this brings us to the outline of my presentation. I'll first give a brief review of waveguides used in practice from where I'll motivate for the sandwiched hybrid waveguide. Then I'll discuss the design and fabrication of grating couplers to couple light into the hybrid waveguide, followed by a discussion on results obtained from our devices and finally, I'll conclude my presentation. Here we show the various waveguides that are used in practice along with the mode profiles. So we have wire waveguide, which is fully etched. Then we have rib waveguide, which is a shallow etched waveguide. Then we have slot waveguide, where light can be confined in the low index region as opposed to conventional structures. In all these structures, the core is made up of a uniform refractive index material which restricts the tuning of waveguide properties like by refringence, effective index, and dispersion. To address this limitation, a core with multiple materials can be useful. And in view of that, augmented low index guide was recently proposed where a low index material is deposited over a high index material in its core. And light can be confined in either of the materials based on polarization. But in this structure, the core is asymmetric, which can result in undesirable mode conversion when light propagates through waveguide tapers. And with this brief discussion, we state the requirements uh, that, our, uh, that we are looking in our waveguide platform. Like we need to have flexibility in dispersion engineering. We want to be able to tune the effective index. We need a control over polarization sensitivity. And finally, we also need a symmetric code to avoid the unwanted mode conversions. From these requirements, we propose the sandwiched hybrid waveguide in which a high index material is sandwiched between two medium index material. And based on polarization, light can be confined either in the high index medium if the mode is TE. And for TM mode, light can be confined in the medium index material. The sandwiched hybrid waveguide has three geometrical parameters, width, height, and fraction. This fraction is defined as the ratio of the thickness of high index material to the total height. In this work, the height has been fixed at 500 nanometer, and we vary the value of fraction to tune the waveguide properties. We have chosen the medium index material as silicon nitrate and MFS silicon material as uh, the high index material as amorphous silicon. And this is because uh, these materials can be easily deposited using tools like PECVD. Here we show the waveguide designing with fraction. This plot shows the maximum slope of effective index, which was obtained by varying the values of width at a given uh, value of fraction. And we can see the Fraction has a strong influence on the maximum slope of effective index. Now, here we show the confinement in a given material, both silicon nitride or MS for silicon for both the polarization. And we see that the fraction uh, strongly decides the contribution from a given material. And this can be useful for applications like nonlinearity in a waveguide, which uh, strongly depends on the nonlinear effective, nonlinear uh, refractive index. Uh, which, which in turn depends on the contribution or the confinement in a given material. Here Now we uh, discuss about the birefringence. So we can also tune the birefringence to be very, very high. And uh, we can also make it close to zero by changing the fraction values. Thus, we can make, it, uh, make our waveguide sensitive to polarization or insensitive to it. 
finally they uh, show that the dispersion can be uh, can be tuned to be in the normal region or near zero or in the anomalous region with this we conclude that fraction can be used to provide flexibility to the dispersion confinement Now to study all these properties practically, we first need to couple light into the waveguide, and that's a challenge because the fiber core is of 10 micron uh, size and the waveguide core is of sub-micron dimensions. And if we want to uh, couple light through edge coupling, there will be high mode mismatch, and there, uh, because of that, there will be poor coupling efficiency. <clears throat> to address this, lens fiber configuration or inverse taper designs are used, but in spite of that, it still suffers from poor alignment tolerance uh, because of the size difference of the fiber core and the wave by taper. <clears throat> and we need to have polished facets and we can only couple at the edges, which restricts the, uh, which restricts the testing of the devices only through edges. Whereas out of plane coupling using grating couplers is preferred because this provides uh, flexibility to pro devices anywhere on the chip and it also provides faster alignment uh, to coupling. In this work, we have used grating couplers uh, for those reasons, and we have designed both TE and TM grating couplers. Here we show uh, the particular design uh, to excite a given mode. So for TE uh, excitation, we uh, designed a TE grating in which amorphous silicon layer is etched, and this is because as we have discussed previously, the light propagates in the amorphous silicon region for the TE mode. And to have optimum diffraction for high coupling efficiency, we etch the, uh, we pattern the gratings in the amorphous silicon region for TE mode. Whereas in TM mode, as light propagates in the silicon nitride region, so to facilitate coupling, we do a full etch. With these designs, we went ahead with the simulations using finite difference time domain to calculate the coupling efficiency. And here is shown the spectral response, uh, the simulated spectral response of our optimized coupler. We get an optimized coupling efficiency of minus 2.6 dB per coupler for TE mode and minus 3.9 dB per coupler for the TM mode. We also did uh, try to uh, simulate the uh, coupling efficiency of the orthogonal polarization in, uh, in our grating. And we found that it strongly rejects the orthogonal mode, that is, with a TE grating, we tried to couple the TM mode and we find it gives around 30 dB rejection. And for a TM mode, it's 24 dB. Thus, these gratings also work as excellent polarization filters. After the design, we went ahead with the fabrication. And in this slide, we discussed the fabrication process flow. First, we take a silicon substrate, we deposit silicon dioxide. Then we deposit silicon nitride. Over that, we deposit amorphous silicon. And because, uh, so in all these uh, depositions, the temperature was kept at 250 degrees Celsius and it was deposited using the ECVD tool. Because in TE mode, as discussed previously, uh, the gratings are patterned in the amorphous silicon region. So we do a lithography and etching and we pattern the gratings and the silicon layer. Then we deposit the silicon nitride to complete the stack. And we finally pattern the waveguides for both TE and TM mode. But in addition to waveguides for TM mode, we also pattern the gratings because the gratings are fully etched. So in TM mode, the, uh, there is a single step lithography and etching process. Whereas for TE mode, it's a two step lithography and etching process. And these two process can be done on the uh, in the same stack. So we can have both TE and TM gratings in the same, uh, same chip. And finally, the devices look something like this. And after fabrication, we observe them under an SCM. And this is the TE grating, this is the TM grating. And this is the cross section of the waveguide, which shows the three layers. After fabrication, we perform measurements on our devices. And here are shown the measurement results. So we get a coupling efficiency of minus 3.27 dB per coupler for the TE grating with a high uh, bandwidth, a 3 dB bandwidth of 100 nanometer. We see a slight red shift in our peak wavelength. And this comes out because of the variation in the edge depth. So we have a lower edge depth in our uh, fabricated devices. 
and it is consistent with our simulation because here we can see that a lower edge depth shifts the wavelength into uh, longer wavelengths. For TM mode, the coupling efficiency was found to be 4 dB less than our optimum value, that is, that is around minus 8 dB per coupler with a 3 dB bandwidth of greater than 90 nanometer. And this was because the silicon dioxide bottom clad thickness is different from what we have uh, we, uh, we desired from our target value. And we expect that as uh, we optimize the silicon dioxide thickness, the coupling efficiency should improve. Now we analyze the uh, grating coupler characteristics uh, by varying the uh, grating parameters. So here we show the variation of grating period. We uh, do the analysis for both the T and TM grating couplers. We first uh, we have shown the simulated uh, uh, coupler uh, spectral response and the measured spectral response of the gratings. And from here we have obtained the peak coupling uh, peak coupling efficiency and peak wavelengths. And then we have uh, compared both measured and simulated. So what we see here is based on period, uh, when the period increases, there is a red shift in the peak uh, wavelength, but there is only a moderate change in the coupling efficiency for both TE and TM polarization. Whereas when we do a similar study for duty cycle, we find that there is a blue shift in the peak wavelength and the coupling efficiency uh, changes significantly. And thus, uh, duty cycle affects both the coupling efficiency as well as the peak wavelength. After analysis of the grating coupler uh, and the variation of the coupler characteristics based on uh, the grating parameters, we now want to confirm our excited mode, whether it is TE or TM. We have designed our gratings, uh, both TE and TM grating, and to confirm uh, the particular excitation, we use an all-pass ring resonator configuration as shown here in the schematic. We first uh, couple light using this uh, grating. And based on the ring response, we conclude whether the mode is TE or TM. Here we show the grating res uh, the ring response for the TE ring and the TM ring. And uh, these dips are coming because of the resonance, uh, which, uh, which is uh, happening in the ring uh, cavity. And the separation of two resonant wavelengths is defined as free spectral range. And the free spectral range is uh, corresponds to the group index, which is a characteristic of the particular mode. And we can see a clear difference between the uh, free spectral range for the TE and TM ring. And when we calculate the group index and compare with simulation, we confirm that the uh, group index then confirms the excited mode. This, uh, so in conclusion, we have introduced our sandwiched hybrid waveguide. We have demonstrated both TE and TM grating couplers. We have studied the tolerance of the grating parameters on the coupler characteristics. And finally, we confirmed the TE or TM mode excitation using an all-pass ring resonator. So in future, we would like to realize various passive devices. And we also want to do nonlinear measurements on the hybrid platform. In, uh, so in acknowledgement, I'd like to thank the Department of Science and Technology and Science and Engineering Research Board for funding this project, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology for supporting the facilities at our department, MHRD for scholarship, NFC and MNCF staff members for assisting us in fabrication and characterization of the devices, my lab mates for supporting me during my research work. And with this, I'd like to thank everyone. And if you have any questions, I'd like to answer them.